The war in Syria hangs heavy with tales of appalling violence, of massacres and abuse. But for Britain and America, it's alleged chemical attacks that cross a red line and raise the spectre of foreign intervention. On the 29th of April, Sarakeb came under attack from government military positions about five miles in that direction. Using eyewitness testimony and video taken on the day, we tried to piece together what happened. The filming started right here from this vantage point as the artillery shells landed just on the other side of the building. It's a day that ended with what's claimed to be a chemical weapons attack. Allahu Akbar. A local activist gave us this footage. He says it was taken as the shells landed. We can't verify these images, but all the videos you're going to see were apparently taken on the same day by different people we met. A helicopter was spotted high above the town. Eyewitnesses allege at least two canisters were dropped from it. They say it was shortly after they landed that casualties started to arrive at Sarakeb Hospital. Eight people were admitted, apparently with similar symptoms. They appear to be vomiting with breathing problems. The worst affected was Mariam Khatib. Relatives claim a device had landed in her garden. Videos appear to show her unconscious with constricted pupils. Doctors who treated her claim she had signs of exposure to chemical agents. The mother of eight died later that day. Her daughter was filmed nearby. The video appears to show her tongue distended. Her sons were also on the scene and say they had to be treated. Again, they apparently suffered respiratory and vision problems and appear to have constricted pupils. Mohammed is the eldest son. He says he tried to help his mother, but she collapsed in his arms. It was a horrible, suffocating smell. You couldn't breathe at all. Your body would become really tired. You'd lose all senses. You'd feel like you were dead. You couldn't even see. I couldn't see anything for three or four days. We were taken to the house by one of her nephews. He showed us where the device is said to have landed. Samples have been taken from here and from the victims and sent to Britain, France, Turkey and America for testing. Later in the day, four patients were brought here to a hospital near the border. Dr. Zuma treated them. The symptoms she displayed, unconsciousness, vomiting, pinpoint pupils, they all correspond to poison gas exposure. They often match organophosphate poisoning. It has many derivatives, one of which is sarin gas. We had our doubts, but we can't be sure until we analyze it. Mariam's house lies abandoned, the family too afraid to return. A British chemical expert has looked at the material and what happened here and says there's strong but incomplete evidence a nerve agent was used. But it doesn't show who's responsible. And for people like Mohammed, the real issue isn't how people were killed, it's death itself. And what they say is the indifference of the world to their plight. Ian Panel, BBC News, in Sarakeb.